Okay, let's talk about 9.4. Our goal here is to be able to use and understand the perpendicular bisector theorem. So we'll write bisector right there and a little warm up here. Um, so it says five equals five. Well, I mean, that's like a no duh, but the question is why? There's actually a reason, um, like a, a, a mathematical, algebraic, geometric reason why five equals five that we'll be using in a proof, so we wanna know what that is. So the commutative property is where we can say things like this. Three plus four is equal to four plus three. So when we move things around in an addition problem where you can make it a multiplication problem, it doesn't change the answer. You can move things around there. Um, so that's the commutative property. Reflexive property, come back to that one in just a second. Symmetric property, maybe we remember what that one is. Symmetric property works like this. It's if you've got A equals B, then you can take that and you can flip it around and you can say B equals A. Just kind of like doing a big pan pancake flip. The sides are, it's symmetric. You can kind of flip it down the middle. So when I think of the reflexive property, I think of the reflexes like we have in our elbows and our joints and stuff like that. So if I had a reflex in my elbow, my, my, my arm might come back toward my own body. So the reflexive property means something is, is equal to itself. So it kind of reflexes back to itself. So this is, the, this is the reason right here that five is equal to five. You could say four is equal to four, or two is equal to two. Um, it's just the reflexive property. So just keep that in mind for later. And then it says if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle uh, DEF, then AB, so AB is right here, so this one right here, is congruent to what one over on the other one? Well, let's just double check and see here. So A corresponds to D. They're in the same place in the naming of the triangle. So these two angles would be congruent. And then B and E would be congruent. So we'll put two marks there and two marks there. And then, of course, the last one is automatically congruent. Um, and the triangles are exactly the same size and exactly the same shape. So if I put a mark on AB, I'd put a corresponding mark on DE. So we put DE here. And the reason there is kind of what I've been saying. It's because they correspond. So I'm just going to write they correspond. And they're on yep, they're on uh, congruent triangles. So that's a, that's a reason there that we would give. So a, a line segment or array um, line that goes forever in both directions, uh, an array that's perpendicular to a segment and cuts the segment into two congruent parts. So we'll write the word congruent here. Then it's called a perpendicular bisector. So we can have a segment, a line, or array. As long as it's perpendicular to a segment and it cuts it into two congruent parts, then it's called a uh, perpendicular bisector. So on a, the example, we've got this segment CD is perpendicular to segment uh, AB. So AB is right here, and CD is the perpendicular bisector because it does two things. It's perpendicular, so we've got that little uh, right angle mark right there, and it, it cuts it in half. We've got two equal pieces. And we've got the perpendicular bisector theorem, which is the focus of this, um, this lesson. And it says that any point on the perpendicular bisector of a segment is equidistant from the end points of the segment. And what we want to do is we want to look up this diagram and kind of convince ourselves using maybe some triangles and stuff like that, especially side angle, side triangles, that that would actually be true. So it says we can pick any point on the perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to pick this point right here. I'm going to pick C. And it says it's equidistant from the end point of the segment. So this distance right here is exactly the same as this distance right here. So what we're saying is the two of those things are the same. That's what this theorem says. Now the reason for that, and if we think of side angle side, that's what we're after, you'll notice that this was a perpendicular bisector, so we've got a couple things here. Those are both right angles, so those angles are congruent. And these two sides are exactly the same. And then you'll notice that this is a common side. This is a shared side. So I'm going to do one, two, three right there. So um, we've got a side and an angle and a side. So I'm just going to do side, angle, and a side. And then a side and an angle and a side. And this side is congruent to itself right there. And that's really the key to figuring all of this out. We're going to do a proof in just a second. Okay, so what we need in order to do this proof is we need an idea that's central to a lot of geometric proofs, and the intuitive idea in part B up above, so this part right here, the fact that they correspond, that's really what we're after. So in part B of the warm-up, 
we said that, well, we know that AB is congruent to DE because they're the corresponding sides of that triangle. They match up. Um, we've got AB here and we've got DE here, so they would have to be, uh, they would have to be congruent. So here's how we say this. Um, and the, the shorthand for this is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And you may have a typo on your notes. I hope not. But if for short, we say CPCTC. And that can be kind of a tongue twister sometimes. So I've got CPCTC here, and then these, these are bolded. So it says corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, so we want to go ahead and we want to prove the perpendicular bisector theorem. So in order to prove the per perpendicular bisector theorem, this is what we're given. We're given that CD is the perpendicular bisector theorem of AB. And just to make sure we're clear, what we want to prove is that if you pick any point on that perpendicular bisector, that these two are going to be congruent, that AC is going to be congruent to BC. Okay, so just kind of like we had up on the diagram up here and kind of talk that through. So we've got some statements down here, and then we've got some reasons for this. So CD, so uh, line CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Well, that's given. We're, we're automatically given that. And then it says AE is congruent to something else. So AE would be congruent to this side over here. So I'm going to mark the two of these. So AE would be congruent to BE. And the reason for that is that's the definition of a bisector. A bisector is going to cut things in half, so this, if this is a perpendicular bisector, it's going to cut the segment in half. The next thing that we've got for a statement is it says, says that angle CEA, so CEA, so this angle right here is congruent to CEB, so C E and B, so this one right here, those are congruent. Well, the reason those are congruent is because they're both right angles. So we're, what we're going to write on this one is we're just going to write definition of perpendicular. Perpendicular. So if it's perpendicular, it's going to cut it into two right angles, and those two right angles are uh, congruent. Perpendicular. Okay. Now, um, we're not going to get carried away by saying, hey, um, it, it cuts them into, uh, they're perpendicular, so they're both 90 degrees, and if they're 90 degrees, then they're, then they're equal, and that makes them congruent and stuff like that. We won't get carried away. We'll just say, hey, if that's perpendicular, we've got a 90-degree angle on one side and a 90-degree angle on the other side. And then here's where we use the idea from the warm-up. Um, we know that this side is congruent to this side, and we know that this angle is congruent to this angle over here. But what we need in order to prove that these two triangles are congruent is we need another side. So this side right here, I'm going to put two marks on that. CE is congruent to CE. That's the fact that CE is congruent to itself. It's the same line used on both sides, so it's congruent to itself. And that is the reflexive property. So the reflexive property, we'll just write reflexive there. And then this is enough to say, well, look, I've got a side here and then an angle and then a side matched up with a side over here and an angle and a side. So these two triangles, um, CEA, the one on this side, and I'll highlight that. So the one on this side, CEA, is congruent to the one on the other side. That's CEB. Those two are congruent, and the reason we know those are congruent is because we've got a side and an angle and a side. So I'm just going to put side, angle, side right here. And then AC is congruent to BC, which is what we were trying to prove. The fact that this one is congruent to this one over here, the reason for that is those are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So we're going to put CPCTC, and you can see why we, we abbreviate that. Okay, so there's that proof. Let's flip it over and let's use this theorem. So it says, once we've proven a theorem true, we can use it to solve other problems. So line CD is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB, and it says solve for X. So here's AB, the line right there, and then the segment right there, and then CD is that line that cuts across there. So we know that these two triangles are congruent, and using the theorem, what it means is that if we pick any point along here, it could be right here, it could be right here, it could be down here, it could be down here. It's always going to be equidistant from the end. So all we have to do is just literally set the two of those equal. So we know that this side is going to be congruent to this side. So we're going to take 8x plus 16, and we're going to set it equal to 24. So we're going to subtract 16. We get 8x equals, that would be an 8. So we end up with x equals 1.
Okay, so that quick we can just apply the theorem knowing that those two have to be equal because uh, this point is on the perpendicular bisector. So if we come down here, we've got a, a more complex diagram and it says lines L, M, and N are perpendicular bisectors of the triangle. So triangle P, Q, R. So P, Q, and R. And each one of these, L and M and N, they're all perpendicular bisectors of the sides and they happen to meet at T. And then it says the segment lengths are labeled, match up uh, congruent measurements to find X, Y, and Z, and it has a little hint here. This isn't meant to be complicated. So one thing you might do is your, your, your eyes might be drawn to these guys right here. This and this. So this point T is on the perpendicular bisector, and we might say, oh, those two are equal, and we'd set them equal. Well, that would have two, var two variables in it, and we wouldn't be able to solve that. So let's look for a simpler solution here. Let's match up this side with this side over here. Well, then I have 2x would equal 8. So I'm just going to say 2x is equal to 8. Let's see if we can match up something else. Um, if we look really carefully, um, this side right here has got to be congruent to that one because I've got this little triangle right here. It comes along here like that. So I'm talking about that triangle right there. Um, this point T is on the perpendicular bisector of, of side PR. So it's got to be uh, any point on that perpendicular bisector has to be equidistant from the endpoints. So we would know that 8 has to be equal to 3y minus 1. So I'm going to say 3y minus 1 equals 8. And then the last one we look at, um, remember it said these are perpendicular bisectors. This isn't marked. But what that means is that this segment from here to, and I'm going to put a, let's say we put a, a point uh, A on here. So from P to A is the same distance as from A to R. So that would mean that Z plus 4 is equal to 7. And then we just solve each one of those. So of course we get X equals 4 from this one. If I add 1 here, I'd get 3Y equals 9. So if I divide by 3, I get Y equals 3. And then this one here, I just move that over, so I'm going to subtract 4, so we get z equals 3. So I get the three different variables there just from that one piece of information about the perpendicular bisectors and the perpendicular bisector theorem. So we're going to come down, on, on, down here and take a look at the last one. This says, um, and again, I, I hope you don't have a typo on yours. This says that given that BD, so ray BD, so that's this ray right here, um, is a perpendicular bisector of segment AC. So it's going to cut that in half, and it's going to be perpendicular. It says, create a two-column proof that proves that angle A is congruent to angle C. So we're focused right here and right here, and we want to prove that those are, those are congruent. Now, there's usually lots of different ways to prove something. Um, I'm going to try and do this as simply as possible, but the key is to make sure we're writing down some logical steps so that somebody can just follow and go, oh, okay, I get that. We don't want to make big leaps that somebody would say, I don't really get that, or what's your reason for that? We kind of want to spell everything out. So I'm going to draw a line right here. And of course, we're going to have the statements over here. And you can do paragraph proofs, proofs and diagram proofs and, and things like that. Um, but we're just going to stick with this two-column proof idea. And the first thing we're going to start with is the given. So given that BD, so ray BD is a perpendicular, perpendicular bisector bisector of AC, and that's going to be given, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this and say, okay, if that's a per perpendicular bisector, then I can mark these two sides as congruent. So that would be that AD is congruent to CD, okay? And the reason for that is that's definition of a bisector, kind of like what we did on the front, definition of a bisector. Okay, once we've got that, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move to the other part that we know from a perpendicular bisector. It cuts it perpendicularly so those two angles are equal to each other. So I'm going to say that angle, angle A, D, B is congruent to angle. If I do A, D, B, I probably ought to do C, D, B, C, D, B. Those are congruent because of the definition of perpendicular. Okay, so perpendicular. All right, the next thing we're going to take a look at is we're going to say, well, look, I've got this side congruent to that side, that angle congruent to that angle. So I'm going to mark that right there. That means that BD 
because we're going to use that on both of them, that BD is congruent to BD, all right? And the reason for that is that's that reflexive property again, okay? So reflexive property. Well, if I've got this side and this angle and this side congruent to this side and this angle and this side, then I can say that triangle A, B, D, so I'll do A, B, D, is congruent to triangle C, B, D, C, B, D, and the reason for that is side, angle, side. And then the last thing that we were after is we wanted to prove that angle A, C was congruent, sorry, angle A was congruent to angle C, so that's these two guys right here. Well, if we match those up, those are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So angle A is congruent to angle C, and the reason for that is CPCTC. So we'll just make this look right here, CPCTC. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, um, you've got some problems that are just a little bit more like this on your assignment, so a little bit more like just solving those, and maybe a couple of proofs or something like that, but uh, good luck on the assignment.